Good morning, everybody, and welcome to The Balancing Act. We're so glad you joined us. I'm Julie Moran. And I'm Olga Villaverde. All right, let me start with a personal question. Okay. Are you a procrastinator? No. Neither <laughs> am I. So you like things as soon as possible. Check them off the list. I cannot check my list off fast enough, and my list can be long and involved, and I'm like, check, 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 check. I'm already writing things to do, and I'm doing them as I speak. <laughs> <laughs> well, today it's all about planning ahead, so take note. Let's not wait just one more minute. The Balancing Act starts right now. Not long ago, our first guest was quite literally fighting for his life, but he's here today because he's a passionate advocate for kidney disease awareness, and he's hoping his story may be able to possibly help you or your loved one. He's also joined by an equally dedicated kidney disease expert. Joining me this morning are David White and Dr. Tushar Bacharajani. Good morning, gentlemen. Thank you so much for being here. Good morning. Good Glad morning. to be here. Doctor, let me start with you. Let's talk about uh, kidney disease and the magnitude of it today in America. It's, it's a huge problem. Uh, there are about 26 million Americans who have kidney disease. That many? Yes, that many. And, and, and roughly one in three American adult is at risk of having a kidney problem. And plus it adds to the cost for health care because of such a huge problem that is not recognized easily. And, and roughly 80 billion, and that's with a B. With a B. 80 billion cost for treating patients with chronic kidney disease. And you know, when I hear about silent killers, you know, we think about heart disease, we think right. about ovarian cancer, and I was reading here that this disease is known also as a silent killer. Absolutely. It is a silent killer because the patients don't get symptoms until it's pretty late in the game. And, and by the time they present, they have uh, serious, serious problems that they have to worry about uh, surviving rather than trying to find the cure for it. And who's at risk, doctor, for this? By and large, uh, diabetes and high blood pressure. These are the two main risk factors. And then there are other additional risk factors like age, anybody over the age of 60, and patients who are obese, patients who have uh, smoking habits, or patients who have bad lifestyle, they are really at risk of developing chronic kidney disease. And David, if I can bring you in, and thank you so much for being here and sharing your story with us. What stage of kidney disease are you at, and how do you manage this illness? I'm currently at stage three. Stage of, three, uh, and that means what? That means that my kidneys are functioning okay. At the moment, I should say kidney, because I was transplanted last summer. Okay. That means my kidney is functioning okay, but it needs constant monitoring just to make sure that it doesn't get worse because if it does, I'm in real trouble. There are five stages of kidney disease. Mm -hmm. Stage five is the worst. That's called end-stage renal disease or kidney failure. And that's what I was diagnosed with in 2009. Oh my gosh. I had what's called a crash, so I had to go to the hospital. Uh, I was in the hospital for three weeks. During that time, I actually stopped producing urine and I had to have surgery to have a catheter placed so I could start dialysis immediately. And would you say, David, that one of the biggest issues and the most important issue is that of dialysis? Well, I think most people with kidney disease would say that the most important issue is staying alive. Staying alive. Dialysis is how most of us do that. There is another option, and that's a kidney transplant. That's the preferred option. And doctor, would you agree that sometimes, like you just said, it's sometimes a little bit too late in the game, and then the situation can get more grave? Yes, absolutely. I mean, patients who don't get diagnosed until the late stage, uh, we call them crash landers. So that when they come in, for them, Survival becomes a major issue, and getting them back on their feet is, is more important uh, than, than trying to get the solution to what, what can be done to help them out eventually. And the consequences then of that late stage and that late in the game, like you just said, and then the catheter and dialysis for the patient. Yes, when they're that late in the game, the only way to provide dialysis is with the help of a catheter, and then catheter brings in its own set of problems and risks and risk of infection. So. Which is important then to note that it's better not to get there and to kind of plan and try to get there before that occurs. Absolutely. I mean, planning and, and knowing and being aware of being what 
what, yeah. what the problem is, is more important to, to get to the ultimate treatment. And that's why we're going to talk a little bit more about it. So stay right there, gentlemen, because when we come back, we're going to learn of a comprehensively better way to manage late-stage kidney disease. And here's a hint. It has to do with avoiding denial, which is so important, and planning ahead. So stay with us. Welcome back, everyone. We're observing National Kidney Month with two very special guests, kidney dialysis patient and advocate David White, and also renowned nephrologist, Dr. Tushar Bhattarajani. Doctor, let me start with you. Planning, huge, right? Absolutely. What yeah. is the first step to start planning dialysis? When you start thinking about dialysis, educating the patient is the most important thing, educating the patient about different modalities of dialysis, and, and then planning for a dialysis access such as a fistula which is the best option to have planned well in advance so that when the patient really needs to start dialysis the patient is ready both mentally and physically. And can you tell me quickly what a fistula is? A fistula is where a surgeon creates a hookup between two blood vessels in the arm. That's the best place to have it. It's under the skin. It's a small procedure. It generally takes about a, a day stay in the hospital. And David, in your situation, did you use one? Did you have that option or were you using a catheter? I was using a catheter because I didn't have a choice. Okay. I didn't have a choice because I didn't know that I had kidney disease because I showed no symptoms. And that's where the key here is to know the symptoms and plan ahead, right, yes, doctor? being aware of it and follow up with regularly with your physicians and follow up with regular blood tests so you know way in advance that you're going to need dialysis and you can have plans put in place. And doctor, are most dialysis patients today using fistulas because of the awareness, if you will? Unfortunately no. not. I mm. mean, the, the sad story is that almost 80%, so almost four out of five patients start dialysis with a catheter. Really? Yes, and that's, that's a disaster because catheter has its own problem. The tip of the catheter is situated in the heart, so if there is an infection, the infection can spread all over the body pretty quickly. As opposed to the option of the fistula, which is more beneficial because... Because it is under the skin, there is no plastic hardware, and it's definitely not directly in connection with the heart. And David, as someone who's been through this now and knows that kind of option, I'm sure it would have made a difference for you. It sure would have. Uh, living with kidney disease and dialysis is hard. Uh, living through it with a catheter is even worse because uh, it's uncomfortable and it can be a, a mental burden as well. And that's why you're here today sharing your story. And I know you brought me this beautiful green rubber bracelet. I'd, love, I'd like to share with my viewers what it says. It says hope, love, faith. I'm also wearing the pin. I know this means a lot to you. You're very passionate about creating awareness and educating others out there to do what really is the best thing for them. Yes, that's why it, uh, the pin is green as uh, I'm dressed in green. And it, this green is uh, the color for kidney disease awareness. And this is kidney disease awareness month. And we just want everyone to know that uh, kidney disease is not a death sentence. It is challenging but I am living proof that uh, you can work with it and uh, have a positive result. Doctor, would you like to chime in? Yes, I echo what David just said, and, and, and it is not the end of the world. It, there are options, and if you are aware of it, we can treat in, in a much better way and, and find solutions to get you back on your feet and get you back to doing what you like to do. And doctor, for our viewers out there who'd like more information on kidney disease and what to look out for and options like fistula, where do they go? Well, there are two very good websites. One is kidney.org. The other one is aakp.org. And again, you can always ask for help in your doctor's office. There are enough people around who can definitely provide you information in, in a simple format that you can understand. Thank you for the information. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. And of course, you can always log on to our website. That's thebalancingact.com. Again, the websites are kidney.org or aakp.org for more information about kidney disease. And remember, National Kidney Awareness Month. The puppy breath, the unconditional affection, the tail wagging, the frolicking, all good. Now, the sharp nails, the matted hair, the resistance to the sight of the dog brush, not so good. Well, not so fast. Don't write off pet grooming just yet. Why? Two reasons. One, pet grooming happens to be a great bonding experience. And two, we've got the man in the house. We've got the dog father right here in the studio to walk you through it. Celebrity dog groomer and host of Animal Radio and Animal Planet's Dogs 101, Joey Villani. Also joining us this morning is pet parent Chris Cox. 
who happens to be my producer, and his dog, the adorable Cody. He's so good. How old is Cody, and what kind of dog? Cody's eight years old, and he's a Morky, which is a, a half Yorkshire Terrier and a half Maltese. And we're talking about pet grooming today, Joey, and you know, he, he looks pretty good, and a he's lot of happy. parents, yeah, he's happy. I don't know why so many parents are just a little bit like uneasy about pet grooming. It's easy. No it's, big deal. It's brushing your hair. It's the same thing. It you is. Know? It's really and it easy. is important, isn't it, health-wise, in terms of just taking care of your dog? Absolutely. Not only for hygiene reasons, you want the dog to look great, but basically you find things. I find lumps, bumps, moles. So there are consequences if you don't do it. Well, absolutely. You want your dog to look great at all times, but I find things, and that's the most important thing. It also is a wonderful bonding experience. When my girls and I are bathing Ruby and we're doing things together, it, it, it brings everybody together. Well, the kids should always have the brush in their hand. I mean, the, the last thing is always the parent gets stuck with it or the groomer. But you know what? If the kids start brushing at an early age, the number one, the dog gets used to it, and they learn the responsibility of taking care of their pet and making it look great. All right, Joey, so walk me through some good pet grooming tips and tools. So we got a bunch of tools here by Conair Pro Dog. But the brush that I'm going to use on Cody is going to be the slicker brush right here. This is designed for his coat type. Okay. As you can see, they've got bent pins here. And what this is going to do is going to grab and pull. You could sit, Cody. Real lightly, I'm mm -hmm. going to brush. I don't want to brush too hard. And I'm going to brush Cody out until I get all the knots and tangles out of that area. Okay. Once I get the knots and tangles out of the area, I'm going to take my comb and I'm actually going to check what I did. If I hit a snag, don't pull it with your comb. Go back to your brush and brush that area. Let me try it just once, okay? Sure. Quick. Okay. Ready? And while he's trying it, let me ask you this. What's this one here? It's a couple of things. It's the D-Shed, a short-haired dog. It's in the pettit line. It fits right in, in the palm of your hand, but it's also a massage oh. and shampoo brush. Now, your dog is going to love this, okay, because this is like the spa day. <laughs> um, he's getting his little massage, he's getting his hair cut, a little face. bit of everything. And we've got some other products over there. We have some products here. That's, that's a, um, a trimmer, but I have my small trimmer here. And for Cody, this is perfect. Number one, it runs off a AA battery. And when I use it, turn it on first, pet your dog, let him get used to the sound. And then I can do problem areas like the corners of the eyes here. It's oh, yeah. okay, Cody. Yeah, yeah, it's okay, buddy. Take out any goobers there underneath the tail. Really, any problem spot on your pet, this is perfect for. And you know, this dog is exceptional. Ruby's pretty good, too. Yeah, Cody's a really cool dog. But now, the, I'm just curious, curious about the ears. The ears, oh, that's a good point. is that because these are sensitive for dogs? Same way. Brush it and comb it exactly the same way, real light. Go with the lie of the coat, and you'll have no problems. Okay. And when it comes to grooming, do you feel like all dogs are like this? No, some no. dogs you can give them a steak dinner and a champagne cocktail, and, and, and it's not. But the more you do it, the, usually the better you get. I love it. So we just need to do more of it, Medi make it a family experience, and they'll love it. And make it medium rare. And make it medium rare. Always medium rare. That's right. With a glass of wine. Of course. Joey, for information on all these great products, where do our viewers go? Go to conairpet.com. Conairpet.com. Thank you so much. I Thank really you. appreciate it. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you for bringing Cody. You're welcome. Cody, you were great today, buddy. And who was the star of the show today? Me? Gosh, I knew he was going to say that. Cody! Oh, please. He's such a ham. <laughs> and I'm the cheese. <laughs> and for more information on all these great products, again, conairpet.com or thebalancingact.com. Great, say great goodbye, stuff. Buddy. Say bye, Cody. If someone handed you some industrial cleaning supplies, the very last thing you do is ingest that, right? Well, the fact is many of those very same industrial chemicals found in car antifreeze and engine degreasers are found in various cosmetic and body care items. And listen to this, within literally 60 seconds, they absorb directly into your skin. So what can we do about that? Natural body care expert John Matisse is here with some fantastic information for us, along with health advocate and celiac spokesperson, a wonderful lady, Sharon Alessino. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you for inviting us. John, thank you as well. Um, Sharon, let me start with you, if you don't mind my asking. Sure. Tell me about what celiac disease is and when you were diagnosed. Celiac is essentially an allergy to gluten, and what that allergy does is essentially it was robbing my body of the nutrients that it needed. Mm. One of the things, for example, that I suffered from most of my life was 
terrible skin. And as I'm sure you can imagine, when your skin is breaking out, uh. your skin isn't glowing, it affects your self-confidence and how you're gonna go out and sort of face the world. And celiac has taught me a discipline of understanding not just what I'm putting in my body, but also what I'm putting on my body. So much of the body care products out there today do have chemicals in them which are bad for you ultimately and that's where people like John come in and products like Eclair are so important. And John let me bring you in because a lot of people think well what you put in your body let's say when you like, swallow and it goes into your stomach what you put on top of your body is just as dangerous as well. Absolutely. What a lot of people don't realize is that your skin is the largest organ in your body. Absolutely. And it, like you said earlier, it only takes 60 seconds for that to get into your bloodstream. And what is it that we are not aware of when we buy these products? What is, what's in there that's so bad? It's unfortunate, but there's a lot of genetically modified um, ingredients that have been produced. A lot of our body care products are derived from corn and soy, and 88% of corn and 94% of soy in the United States have been genetically modified at some point. And what makes this different then? What's in this? And talk to me about that. Sure. All of our products are 100% GMO free, so there's no genetically modified ingredients. We are gluten free to help people like Sharon who have celiac disease. We're Absolutely. soy free. We use all natural fragrances, all natural ingredients. And tell me about the line of products, because I know we have a few here, but there's just a plethora to offer. Absolutely, we have a complete line of body care products. Actually, there's almost 100 items in the complete set. Probably the most interesting is our artisan bar soaps, and we do all these really cool designs. And I love the icicle. Absolutely, that is one of my favorites as well. But we also do lotions, we do hair care, a complete hair care line people that uh, for color protecting, volumizing, moisturizing. And that would be me. Wait, oh good, <laughs> they smell amazing. They and the scent lasts. It's the real stuff. John, let's talk about some that we have here. And uh, let's see, this is a body scrub? This is a body scrub. It's our pink Himalayan salt scrub. <gasps> And the salt actually comes from Tibet. Isn't it wonderful? It has incredible yes. ingredients. It just makes your skin soft, soft and luxurious. And what is this cute cupcake? So this is a bath bomb. No. <laughs> so again, because of Claire, we kind of have this food theme at our company. So that cupcake is actually a bath bomb. And you drop that in the bath, and you just relax. You're kidding. Take time for yourself, enjoy it. It leaves your skin luxuriously soft and smooth. And what woman wouldn't want an indulgence that is not only good for her, mm -hmm. but is fun at the same time? This? That is our shea butter and oatmeal soap. And what's great is it has oats on top, <gasps> and it actually acts like an it smells exfoliant. It smells fabulous. I'm into smell, so I'm sorry. I know this is not smell-o-vision, but I can tell you all that it smells unbelievable. Something I do want to note, and I think it's important to say, is uh, this is just not for you know Sharon, who has celiac disease, or maybe someone who's gluten-free. This could, could be for Olga, could be for anybody. Exactly. When we designed the line, we wanted to make sure that everything was for your everyday consumer. By the fact that it's made with natural ingredients, that's just a side benefit. But this is really an every person, everyday line. I mean, all of us, don't we all want to know that we're making smart choices? And this is a smart choice because you're doing the right thing for yourself. And last but not least, I have got to show, and I know <laughs> it's hard to understand this, but this is soap that you made just for... <laughs> Me? Absolutely. <laughs> I think it's going to last you probably a couple of years. But <laughs> this is the bomb. <laughs> Tell me how you made this. So we have a full team of artists, and they design all of the soaps. You can see, you know, kind of in the shea butter oatmeal soap that we had earlier, or the vanilla sweet orange. But they they do all these great artistic designs, and this is just our gift to you. This is the greatest gift I think I have ever gotten on my <laughs> show. <laughs> Enjoy it. Thank you so much. Uh, where can we find? The products? You can go to Rite Aid Pharmacy. They are absolutely committed to making sure that they've got the right things on the shelves that can help women reach their wellness goals and do it in a really you know, healthy way. Rite Aid Empowering Women, I love that. And John, for information on Eclair, is there a website? EclairNaturals.com, again, EclairNaturals.com. Thank you so much, John, for being here. You look fabulous. Thank you so much. You come back anytime. Thank and John, you. you come back anytime to give me another soap. Absolutely. Because then I'll have to share it with my crew, okay? Because this one's coming home with me. Yes? Exactly. You <laughs> deserve Thanks, it. Thank, Thank you so much. You. Appreciate your time. And remember to log on to our website, thebalancingact.com, for more information. And don't forget to follow us, gosh, it smells so good, on Facebook and Twitter. This is amazing. 
And before we say goodbye, remember, don't put off tomorrow what you can do today, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Including this, log on to thebalancingact.com. And don't forget, of course, to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. So long, everybody. Find your balance. Provided by stage stores.